Hello. Over the years, the Black Library has explored the worlds of Warhammer Fantasy and 40k through a great many awesome books of fiction and art, but they've also explored it through something a little bit unusual as well. Though we don't see them all that often today, the Black Library has excelled at crafting narrative and lore and story through the background book, something that brings together art and character and fiction in a unique immersive experience that can often feel as if it's been plucked out of the very universe it's written about. I'm Jordan, this is Jordan Sorcery, and today I'm taking a moment to appreciate one of my favourite ever Black Library background books, Blood on the Reich. Before we get started, I just wanted to admit that this was not the original video I intended to release today. I have had a lot of exciting work underway, including some really fun interviews that I'm going to be sharing soon, but that has meant that some of my projects have fallen a little bit behind where I was hoping they would be. So this is not so much a history of Black Library or the background books from there, but it is a warm reflection about a book that I really enjoy. So let's start with just a quick overview of those Black Library background books. The period in Black Library's history around the mid-2000s was an interesting one. Inferno Magazine, the project that the Black Library had first been set up for in 1997, was going strong. There were reprints of classic GW books. Strong series like Gotrek and Felix, Eisenhorn and Gaunt's Ghosts were well established, and plenty of other novels, anthologies and trilogies were being released. The Horus Heresy was on the way. Dan Abnett's Horus Rising would release in 2006. But before that series became intergalactically successful, the Black Library was also looking at other ways to explore its own IPs and IPs from other companies and settings as well. They had created the Black Flame imprint to publish fiction set in other sci-fi and horror worlds. So there were series of books about Jason X, Final Destination, Nightmare on Elm Street, 2000 AD, and even GW's by then defunct Dark Future setting. But there was something even cooler on the horizon. The Black Library began creating background books. Some of them would be small little artefacts that were as if they'd actually been taken from within 40k and Warhammer Fantasy. Small texts like the Imperial Infantryman's Uplifting Primer or The Life of Sigmar put together in such a way that they felt like they were real books that an Imperial Guardsman or a citizen of the Empire would consult before taking a prayer on a given day or performing a given ritual. And to go with them, there were larger scale books as well. There were not quite so many for 40k, but it did have the very cool Xenology book, and there were plenty created for Warhammer Fantasy. Books like The Empire at War, a study of great battles of the Empire, The Liber Necris, the Book of the Dead in the Old World, The Loathsome Ratmen and All Their Vile Kin, a book of dark secrets about the Skaven, The Liber Chaotica series, a deeply unsettling set of tomes, about each god of chaos, and grudge lore, a history of grudges and the great realm of the dwarves. That's just some of the amazing works that were created during this period. They were often presented as if written by characters from within the Warhammer and 40k worlds, but of course there were real authors who contributed amazing work to these books, including Matt Ralphs, Mitchell Scanlon, Nick Keim, Gav Thorpe, Alessio Cavatore, Thomas Pirinin, Bill King and Marjan van Stauffer, and the work of individuals like Mark Gascoigne and almost too many artists to count helped to bring these books to life. As well as being wonderful books in their own right, these releases were often accompanied by a very limited run of special editions, typically numbering only a few hundred produced. These editions featured wood-burned covers, evil tomes that were bound by chains, or that had skulls erupting from the cover. The Liber Chaotica collection even took home the silver prize for best regalia at the 2007 Any Awards. Though I don't understand why Grudge Law is smaller than the rest, I absolutely love these books. I foolishly got rid of my copy of Xenology and Liber Chaotica many, many years ago, and I definitely regret it. 
but I'm very lucky to have most of the Warhammer Fantasy books in my possession and in my collection still, including this one, Blood on the Reich, just a simply incredible book that is probably the best resource you can ever own for role-playing in the Warhammer Fantasy world. This book is simply magnificent. It tells a story, but largely through the art that it contains, as a wonderfully curated collection of David Gallagher and John Blanche illustrations. They help to paint a picture of life in the Empire and the wider Old World. The conceit of the book is that this is one man's recollection of his many and varied travels through the diverse domains and territories of the Old World, with accompanying drawings and sketches from the hand of the author, Tobias Helmgart. This is one of the books that Matt Ralphs wrote, and it really is just an incredible exploration of the Empire and the Old World. It adds so much richness to my understanding of the law and what it's like to live in these places. And sure, as I say, this is incredible for Wolfrup, but I think that it adds just so much incredible character to Warhammer Fantasy Battle as well. It makes the world that we're fighting over feel real. On more or less every single page, there are incredibly inspiring ideas. It makes me want to convert every character to put together a new Mordheim warband for every page spread, or even to write dangerous role-playing scenarios built around each characterful NPC from every page. There are many, many incredible pieces of art in this book, from the street performers, to the roadside shrines, to the other races that you can find in the old world. I love this John Blanche adventurer called Hanel, he is absolutely brilliant, and I would love a miniature of him. But the image that perhaps stays with me the most from this book is probably one of its simplest, and yet its most poignant, the withering tree of hope. This piece closes the book with a caption that talks of the tree at the end of the world that is slowly dying, much as the Empire and the Old World itself crumbles around it. The closing words read, All things end. Songs, books, loves, lives, all we can do is treasure what we have while we have it, until the transience of life catches up on us all. To me, this book is a true treasure indeed, and ironically given those final words, it actually gives me great hope, because this is from an era in Black Library history when they were proving that as well as all of the amazing novels and the amazing paintings and illustrations, and pictures, they were also able to combine these things and create something perhaps a little bit more broadly described as art. I think that this is a true work of art. It's absolutely fantastic. It's inspiring, it's immersive, and it's moving. And it just tells a story in a completely different way to a lot of other Games Workshop products at the time and since. So, this, I guess, is my hope and also my I could plea I suppose <laughs> to Black Library and Games Workshop is to start looking at this kind of stuff again because it really just it adds so much for me at least to the Warhammer and 40k universes to the old world and to the Age of Sigma as well these are the kinds of things that I look for that just change my perception of these game worlds and really make me love them even more I hope that that brief consideration of one of my favourite background books from Warhammer was enjoyable to watch. I certainly enjoyed sharing a little bit more about it with you. Why don't you share with me one of your favourite background books or even bits of background down in the comments below. In the description you will find links to my Patreon, to my Ko-fi and to my Discord, as well as my Element Games affiliate links which you can use if you want to support the channel. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Jordan, and this is Jordan Sorcery. I was going to do a joke, but after rereading this, I don't know, man. I'm, I think I'm going to take him off.